fourth <laughs> level now. So fourth they're, level, yeah, okay. they're going up fast, so to speak. It was just took long in Good the morning, beginning. everyone. We'll see you on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I can really recommend um, running zero level campaigns. I, I really like it. They you get characters that are immersed in the campaign from the beginning. Instead of having a backstory, you play the backstory, you create the backstory together. Yes, that is yes. Well, I want to talk about that some this morning. We're not live yet, are we, Jay? I don't think we're live yet. Uh, but I want to talk to you about that, Anna, because that's a yeah. that kind of goes part and parcel with the, the yeah. way I'm architecting this particular campaign, which is something yeah. different than I've done what before. What you need to do, I think, is to work out how you want to, to, to add features to meaning abilities and stuff right. i do it in a dynamic way so the characters if they want to learn something they can roll for it meaning they want to learn the cantrip for instance then they have to figure out if they've never seen it that just like oh i want to be able to cast magic missile i've heard there is something to magic missile. it should be really difficult they roll once a day in game so to speak and then so you would give them dc 20. So, so you said cantrip a moment ago, but you would actually give them the ability to learn a first level spell before they were first level in your Not zero first level. first level spell, only cantrips first. But once they know okay, cantrips, but... then they can they can learn first level. Okay. But they have to learn. They have basically they have to learn all the 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 things that a first level character knows before. Already, they that makes I, I like that. Yeah. I like that. We are live. Mm -hmm. We are live. Okay, great. Yeah. What 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 I emphasize is that if they have someone that can teach them or a, they have access to it, meaning, okay, I want to learn to fight with swords, meaning I need a sword, I need to someone to spar with, or I have to fight something, so to speak. Sure. Then, then it should be easy to learn. If you have someone to, to teach you a week in in-game time or a few days, and you get the basic ability to do it. But if they want to learn something and there's no equipment, they don't have, have no, no one to teach them, then you should make it hard. So the, the first mission is just to find someone to teach you, find the equipment and the challenge, so to speak. That's basically all I'm emphasizing on, on zero level gameplay. No, that's the whole story, so to speak. I like that. Sprinkling some cool things, meaning a, 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 a nasty rat in the basement is enough of a challenge for this. Mm. And, oh yeah, absolutely. Like that, meaning yes. you can have like a, a yeah, you have like tourniquet. there is like a, a rat. There's a a, a, a a huge spider, meaning it's like a tiny spider that, sure. that lives in the basement, or 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 the the angry. You can even have like the the the, the a ram that is nest angry at protecting it, 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 uh, his flock of, of sheep that goes after the characters. And they, okay, I, enough, I, I've seen those on Instagram. Yeah, those yeah. are those are dangerous. You get a squirrel yeah. in your house and try to get out. <laughs> yeah, or so, skunks so you in your can, basement. You can have right? <laughs> fun challenges like that, to, that, that you don't need to do much, so to speak. And and if you get them seriously into combat, then you have to have someone there to help them. Meaning, don't send them out in the wilderness on a mission with against an orc or something, because they, they will get killed. But, but ten, and, and also what, what I've found is that after I've done this, I get characters that are just a little bit better than normal first level characters because I give them basically the, the normal hit points. I give them like one D6, one full hit die minimum, D4, D6 hit points full, so to speak. So they have a decent amount of hit points. So they might get two or three more hit points. They might learn a skill or two or have a little feature somewhere that they will not have, nobody hey, would have, so to speak. I'm just gonna, that's my mother calling, I'm just gonna, so. We're even doing a giveaway today on this. So there you go. So okay. you get your choice yeah. of either uh, Treasures of Great Hulk or the Book of Taverns. So, uh, all right. Both classics. All right, they're very good, both. I love those so, books. All right, if you, uh, and I will send it right out. So there you go, it should be all set up. Hey, long shot, Lurk, is Lurk in a way, oh, Greg. Oh, we're live. Lurk, yeah, oh yeah, Anna, what'd you do? Yeah, we're live. Awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, we're some patron here. Do you yeah, think we would let all that go to waste? Anna, we need to capture that. That, yeah, that, that was, was awesome. Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, hang on not... a second, I'm, I'm getting into chat here. So, yes, so, hey, Mark, yeah. So we, we, we thought about this last night. So I was thinking, yeah. how am I going to do this? Do I do it upstairs? I was like, ah, I'm just leaving my equipment down here for tonight, and I'll get it upstairs for cool. the fishing mapping yeah. show tonight. This is where all the resources. That's it. This is where all the resources are. Yeah. So I brought yeah. I brought a lot of the books for Fishy Greyhawk and and uh, uh, hey hey Chantel hey Mike good hey to see Amanda you. Keith 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, normally, uh, Mike, uh, unless it's a Tim adventure on Saturday morning or a fundraiser or something, it's just uh, Bill and I took off from work to hang out with John from Blue Box, and uh, we had a great game last night, and we're just chatting. We're just yeah. I figured we'd uh, have some discussion points, and you know, it doesn't matter how many people we have on because I don't, I don't need to care support. about that no, stuff. Either. No, yeah. I just wanted this recorded because I'm going to get some details here for my notes for my new campaign. And I want to be able to go back and rewatch it. So, so uh, we'll wait another five, ten minutes, and we'll go into the, the, the meat of things. So yeah. just reminder, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern tonight, Anna, myself, and a great guest from Chaosium himself, from the company. Uh, I forget his name. Is it Matt Ryan? No. Matt Ryan, yep. Matt Ryan. According from- to Alyssa, it's, yeah, because I don't know him, so this will be really cool he's a map maker for chaosium i mean how much cooler do you get with that Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. we'll have we'll have him on tonight um and uh uh, that'll be uh there we go i'll I'll cover my face okay so i didn't have time for to update the scrollers or anything this is from the adventure from saturday so he's already had the zoom embedded so matt ryan on tonight at eight o'clock and then sunday night is um our creative jam they're the two things we got going on uh you know no saturday night game uh, and that's I'll be the least talented person there. <laughs> I don't know about that, <laughs> but yeah, Christine, Mike, the game, Jeremy's coming on, uh, uh, Darling, and Bill the Master Craft here, and I'll just sit there. They're all craft, uh, and we'll just uh, I'll re-highlight people in the Zoom box, and we'll have some fun talking about crafting, and that'll be se- uh, someday. So I'm working on pirates right now. Yes, and that'll make Christine very happy. Yeah. Okay. Two more, two more of Christine's pirates to go. That's awesome. <laughs> So uh, I'm trying to get the big camera so that John, you're in it too here. But well, you can turn the other camera on, John. No, no, no. You want me to? You want you want to slide, slide over or? Am I... Yeah, slide over, man. Okay, I'm just trying to. You it's to like you're, I want to be able to see the, the guests. Too, so. Slide over. I asked Chuck to come on too. So. Yeah, All right, I can go there here. There we go. Look at that. There there we go. In the back of your head while I'm talking that's, to you. That's, that's awesome. John, I love your T-shirt. Uh, oh, thank you. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to make Chuck feel bad here. I'm going to call him. So, uh, John, uh, let me make the call to, to, to Chuck first, and then we'll, let's get into your ideas for uh, for your new, your new game. Sure. Uh, which will be awesome. I mean, really awesome. I'm going to embarrass him. I'm going to call him on stream. So, cool Good. shirt. It's a cool shirt. <laughs> it's WJAY Radio. You're a king. You're the winner. <laughs> He's not going to answer because he knows I'm going to bother him. <laughs> Why would you be calling it? Yes. Good, Weezer. That's good. It's a slow Friday, and we're just, you know, we can hop on anytime, right? yeah. you know? Especially with a special guest here. This proves that, that my 598 map publishing is, is cursed, because every time I'm going to post it on Patreon, something happens. And this, I was just about writing all the change list here, and then, then it's popped up in, in Discord. This is awesome. Yeah. Anna on to get on here. Get get. Get on, get dressed. So, Anna, while he's pulling this up, uh, could you go back? We were talking about the Session Zero campaigns. How long did your characters remain at level zero? Um, like, how many how many sessions were they at zero? And- I, uh, I think it was like five sessions, but that was a bit longer than I thought. But I, did, <laughs> I left it to the story yeah, until right. I felt like they really had a solid kind of... Uh, backstory that they were grounded in the village they knew everybody in the village they're starting to have a relationship but they with people i thought they would kind of stand back a bit so when i just introduced there was things going to happen and so on and so forth and dangerous they just jumped whole hog into it started going down in the dungeon under it and and they took Meaning they took all the risks i thought they wouldn't do but they kind of okay let's go in here they Almost TPK twice, so to speak. So, <laughs> so Anna, did, before yeah. they before they started, did they have any background before you actually started? Like, uh, you know, was one the son of a of the town yes, militia, exactly. or yeah. one was a, they, an apprentice yeah. of the local mage or sage? Yep. So help yep. them they develop have, that exactly. They they had that that grounding, so they knew, and and that was something I told them. This is the village. I gave them the village map. And I told them the different houses and, and stuff. And then they just invented and say, okay, I live here with my parents and they are so and so. That meant that all of a sudden I had to, I never thought I had to play their parents and stuff, but that kind of was introduced <laughs> into it. And and that kind of was 
cool in two ways because all of a sudden I realized that uh oh, I have a lot of NPCs now that are on on the player's side. I can't just on the character side. I can't just have I use come in and just murder everybody in the middle except the characters that I thought of originally and have them flee out somewhere because damn, now I need to protect the parents. Yeah. The grandparents and God knows what what they invented and, and dragged into the story. So and what not, I, oh, not oh, me, yeah. Bob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the thing. So so they started to care for all these characters that they invented, which I think is really cool. But that kind of took a new twist to the story, and that's still part of the story because now they have to go out and find out the backstories of their parents and stuff and where do we come from and they want to defend that they're still yelling at some of the NP powerful npcs like those poor civilians are and our grandparents and so on they are sitting in the village and they're getting slaughtered you need to defend them so that's been part of the story to this day in the campaign i love it nana you know it's the the, the truth is though you mentioned they're beginning to care about those npcs mm -hmm. there is no better time to kill an NPC than when the players have begun to care about that NPC. Yeah. So that is yeah. that is a fantastic build up to a slaughter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can kind of, yeah, you can. I didn't want to be so cruel right away. Wait till at least four still, levels. But it's still yeah. on the target list, so to speak. So, yes. so it's a possibility. So, but I let the, the, the dice decide that. I have a, a, fa a faction mechanic. So all the different factions in the game. I have the players roll the d20 every session or every day in the campaign to see which sides are the offensive, which ones are defensive and stuff, and let that guide the story. That way, the players get the sense that, uh oh, the evil ones are approaching and it's coming because all of a sudden their, their numbers go up, so to speak. And then I let it play out because that way they feel slightly responsible. They get like, that kind of hunch under the, the meaning that the, they get that right. sense in the air, so to speak, that something good or something bad is happening. And and that, so I let the players participate secretly in the John. story. So they don't like, know in detail what it is, but they head. sense that it's going their way or not. I love it. I love it. So you're in trouble, John. Mystical Unicorn Payne just said, you are no longer allowed to say you don't enjoy killing PCs laughing out loud. I will not believe you. <laughs> <laughs> you got burnt, man. <laughs> Come on, Amanda. This is just for entertainment with Anna. I really want to see mm -hmm. Anna slaughter all of her level uh, four now PCs. <laughs> I'm saying, no, but, thanks. but you have to you have to introduce enough NPCs that some of them are expendable, so to speak. Otherwise, right there would be no fun yeah. The you red shirts, to, yeah. Well, yeah, but you have to have more than than more than the fair share, like in any TV series or book. That needs to be characters that needs to be killed off in, in the on on the on the battlefield, so to speak, or in the story. Yeah, and you can kill people off, and um, in D and D, the wonderful thing is they can come back, just like last night. Yeah, but that is something I want to have for really rare occasions. Oh, yeah, I mean, it was a rare yeah. occasion last night. I'm, I'm using yeah. that as an example. We but, had... but but I want to, but there should be casualties, meaning if the oh, going yeah. gets really tough, there should be casualties. But oh, yeah. That's right. if it's yeah. semi-real world, yeah. even in the fantasy world, you got to, bad things happen to good people. So it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm yeah. just glad that I only have to paint and not keep all the stuff that Anna has in her head going. <laughs> There's no way I can do it. That, that's yeah. me, I can't use miniatures. That, so, yeah. All right. So, so Belladonna Rose, I'm going to uh, put this in a little perspective. Our campaign's 42 years old with NPCs. So, my guess is this is a guess 1,000 NPCs, 1,200 MP at least. Probably. Yeah. And, uh, yeah but, but, do you mean named creatures that have like a name and, and a stat block and stuff when yeah. you say that? Yeah, but yeah, remember, we're talking about all of my NPCs, mm -hmm. all the Winchesters, all uh, hoops. I mean, yeah, the you know, mayors of yeah. towns, all the Greyhawk mm -hmm. published lore people, Narav Gazgill, the circle yeah. of eight, Tensor, yeah. you know, uh I use and all his minions. Yeah, and some are, or yeah, some I mean, are, are yeah. fully yeah. developed. They're fully some yeah. are. Yeah, Someone yeah, named with the name only because right. you don't need more. Of that. And, yeah. and when you're talking about Greyhawk setting, it has a lot of uh, has a lot of um, established NPCs. It's easy. It's mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. Well, just and, go and, to Bastion of Faith, 
Yeah, in the in the Shieldlands, there's there's twenty five probably developed oh, yeah, native people in there alone. And, and that yeah. and that is that is. I have one hundred and thirty eight species named for this campaign already. How many? One hundred thirty eight. I think the characters have met the party have met probably over it's fifty same. of them that are named and have a stat block. Look at this. We got another guest coming on. So oh, here's cool. the thing, Anna. You just said in one adventure setting you have one hundred thirty eight, and I have about only a thousand twelve hundred over. 42 years. So you can see how they pile up. Oh, right? yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. Chuck! Yay! Yay! So we got we got a nice t discussion of five. We got Anna, uh, Build a Master Crafter, and John Birchfield here, all hanging out post game from last night. Chuck, that's a nice looking shirt you got on, my friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> he, he knew what to wear. He knew what to wear. So, hey, Dave. Good to see everyone. I'm glad we got like 30 plus people on. Love it. Love impromptu it. here. This impromptu awesome. Friday morning. Yeah, impromptu yeah. Friday morning. So we're just uh, shooting shooting the breeze here, talking D and D, talking what's going to be going on. Um, so uh, I'm talking. To Anna's talking about her campaign and how uh, how it got developed up, Chuck. And uh, so um, John, why don't we, why don't we uh, go and in, step into that now? That we got a nice uh, audience on and talk about your Sunday game coming up in a couple yeah. of weeks. Definitely, definitely. And let me uh, give me one second. I'm going to yeah, post no to problem. my Discord and let everyone know that I'm on right now. I already now. did that. You did? Did you? Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> boom, boom, no, boom, boom. No, but you're in the announcement channel. I'm going to go to the general there channel. There you go. Have awesome. Everyone. Very, very uh, cool. Just give me one second. So, Chuck, how you doing, man? Things good? That new uh, that new uh, thing, a feature character generator you got, it's pretty cool, I hear. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a good thing, I think. Yeah, I saw some screenshot. It looked cool. By the way, everyone who does not know, because we've got some new people here because of our time slot we're on right now, Chuck is the community director for Troller Games. There you go. Always use that code. If uh, you're ever just ordering, we don't have a special going on, 15% off. Courtesy of Lord Gazumba channel there for Troll Lord, one of our great sponsors. Oh, worldly known good guy. Yes. Yes. Yeah, ah. absolutely. So. It's rumors. <laughs> so, uh, Let's talk about it, man. Let's, yeah, let's for sure, this. for sure. Look, I mean, and I could not have a, a better crew to have on, uh, both Chuck, of course, with TLG, and Chuck and I have talked about this quite a bit, but Ann and I were chopping it up some on uh, you know, level zero campaigns, which is how I'm starting. So um, we just concluded a three-year campaign with Rune Lords, which was based in the Paizo world of Galarian, and that was a fantastically successful campaign. Thank you very much to all the Mad Chowders who supported that. Um, but it reached a natural conclusion, and it was very, very close to the return of a rune lord. Um, but the party pulled it out at the end. Thank you to uh, one Azamar by the name of Irda that uh, nice. came through and really helped the party. So uh, I've been in the lab now for the past several weeks preparing for the next Sunday campaign that will be running on Blue Box. And I uh, have decided to run this in the world of Aired. Uh, Aired, of course, being the TLG default campaign setting. Uh, I'm not using Castles and Crusades as a rule set. I'm staying with my basic kind of 3.5 1E, 2E amalgam uh, that I've created, but it's going to be in the world of air. Now, as I was coming up with this concept uh, and uh, Troll Lord, a great sponsor for both Jay and I, uh, I thought this made a lot of sense and would be fun. Uh, Steven has reams and reams of content and uh, the, the backstories associated with the world, thousands of years of history. It's really, really cool. Uh, but I got lucky. Uh, Jay happened to be uh, coincidentally uh, also producing uh, the free city of Altamira, which is, of course, in the, the world of Greyhawk. Uh, it's in this folder right now. All the notes and all the, all the writings. But is going to be in aired as well. So you'll have uh, sort of a pick up and drop of all that great lore, the characters, uh, the stories associated with the free city and the surrounding areas. Uh, which are just, you know, in uh, in on the Flanes, they're just north, north of the Pomarge, um, but they've got a great little nestled area to be in the world of Aird. So mm -hmm. I will be starting the campaign, yes, in the world of Aird with TLG, but in the free city of Altamira using uh, some of the content and materials that I've got from Jay. So that's you know, all I can tell you in terms of the overarching story right now. Um, and I'll pause there, but I really do want to get into this, how I want to start it and the level zero uh, idea. So I'll just Pause there, Jay, or audience, Anna, Chuck, any comments or questions on what I've said so far? I think it's no. a 
cool cool concept and, and a cool idea to to do so to speak it's it's kind of yeah you you tie into both air and, and and greyhawk that way yeah yes. exactly absolutely exactly here so, it, thank you for the follow crystal wind so this is the map this is the map right now and Anna's working on super detail if you see the uncle river north of fontenot and then northeast of Dunyalag deep home right where that river begins that's where we're placing the free city of altamira in air okay and what we're going to do is is we're going to we're going to have it's going to be my entire campaign setting of that city in a box set of all sorts of goodies placed there high level maps all sorts of different kickstarter bonuses and what we're what we're going to do and this is the great thing i've been playing greyhawk all these years we're going to have with permission from watsi troll lord publishing this troll lord's going to publish a free it's going to be a troll lord official publication download package that's going to tell you where this is in Greyhawk. Boom, boom, boom. All this, 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 and that'll be in our publication. So we got, we're going to have the best of both worlds here. So, Chuck, what do you think? Literally both worlds. Both worlds. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it, um, hey, Rob, it just seems to me like this is probably going to evolve into something that's going to be really cool on down the road because between John running the campaign, you know, and then of course you putting out your material. As John continues to run his campaign, little bits and pieces of what you're developing, we can showcase in there. And there's also on our own show. So it'll be good. I think people will get a lot of good information along the way versus where a lot of times people say, hey, we're going to do something. Then like two years later, it just comes out and they don't really know. Oh, you know, it'll be nice to have a steady flow of, of uh, you know, information about what's going on with the development in that way, you know? Uh, I, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I will tell you all this writing is hard. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting through this. I'm doing my best, and it, it, uh, Anne's doing. Anne and I are partners on this, and we're going to get through this, and we're going to have an unbelievable box. Well, I have the easy. I do what I normally do, so I just, <laughs> that's what I normally do. So that no difference there. You're the the one that do things that you normally don't do. The or at least you don't do it the way you normally do it for your own games. Now you have to write right. for other people's games, and and that's trickier than to just take note, make notes for your own games. But we need to challenge ourselves constantly. And by the way, GM, good to see you. Yeah, so John was here last night and played in the game last night, uh, this, uh, the St. Lee Reliquary. It was an awesome, fun it's game. Fun. And John doesn't fly, doesn't fly out from Philly until uh, late this afternoon. So I was like, let's just have an impromptu stream so you can get, get together. We all three of us. Bill the Master Crafter, John and I went to breakfast. We came back. And like, let's just do it. Love it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, that, you, yeah. that you called me up on Discord and then just got me in. And I yeah. must say, hey, say hi to Dwayne from Wales. He's one of my players. He's on stream. And he he, he told me that that uh, we actually had seven sessions where we will uh, we'll see. Or not there you go, Dwayne. Wow. Yep. Love that. My, Love so that. My guys would poke their eyes out. <laughs> in particular, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Alan would Alan would take one of the corners of these of the Smolic board and he just you know well developing a character from zero is different than how we normally play yeah we right are we are sure. a strategy combat like RP game yeah going from zero level character it is high RP yes less dice a lot, of, yeah, right. a lot less yep. dice yeah. so yep. it, it it would be very different from what we're accustomed to. True, true. But it would probably be fun to try it once. I, I, yeah, I, I think it's going to work really well. So I'm going to log into John's game on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that passed the uh, the uh, application process. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I like about this is uh, if you if you watch any of my games, I do hold true to canon as much as possible. I like to tell the stories that the world builders told, even if as I started GHA Book One, you know, still an homage to the original Hamlet. Uh, really drawing from the lore on all the available wikis and content, uh, and then customizing. Well, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do my best to bring the free city of Altamira to life uh, from a different perspective, uh, but also to weave in the vision that Stephen has for the world of Aird. And uh, I'm, I was reading the Andaluth again uh, last night, uh, which is no light reading. Uh, Stephen's content is very dense. But I think there are stories that can be woven together here, which will be an absolute blast. Now, let's switch to the start of the campaign. So here's my idea. Um, I have never done this before, uh, but it makes so much sense. And I know it's been done by others. I've not seen it on Twitch. The way I'm going to do the level zero, Bill, is I'm going to start off all of my PCs will be between 11 and 13 years old. 
to start out. Wow. I and started when they were 15. Yeah, 14, 15. Yeah. Oh, then you'll yeah. go through it. it percent of time. Yeah. Exactly. So they're all, they're all going to be sort of either, you know, pubescent or right, right, right there at that age. So they're going to create their own origin <laughs> stories. They will each be urchins in the free city of Altamira. I'm actually going to have them group together. Uh, so I've got sort of a plan around how that's <laughs> going to happen. So, so you'll have, you'll have these four urchins uh, in the slums of the free city, all for different reasons. So each will have their own backstory, but their backstories will be the first 11 years of their lives or 12 years of their lives. And then I will play out that level zero. And I don't know if that's going to go on for three sessions or five sessions or seven sessions. Um, but that's going to allow them to have this really fun sort of co-creation of the written backstory and the lived backstory. And then the plan is at some point when it makes sense and appropriate and is contiguous with the story, there'll be a break and I will accelerate them uh, to, let's say, eight to 10 years later when they're in their early 20s. Now they'll be first level PCs, but they'll have the story elements and the woven together pieces of what they did at, as level zero as urchins in the free city of Altamira. And uh, my players are super excited about it. I'm excited about it. I'm thinking about it every single night. Um, I, I can't I can't say too much, but I got I got some really fun concepts there. So let me open it up to the panel thoughts, suggestions. Um, so, <laughs> squatter camps. <laughs> well, first of all, there's no urchins in the city of Altamira. It's very high class city. There has to be somewhere. No, <laughs> there were. But then the boogeyman came. They yes. all are gone. Uh -oh. that, the, wait till we tie in the boogeyman of Altamira story. Because here's hey. here's the story. This is this is actual happened in the course of gameplay. This is pre-Twitch times. This is pre-Twitch times. Long time ago. So the city of Altamira has a section because it's uh, a lot of refugees were drawn to it in the early days of the founding of the city. I, I got a real bad. I got a real bad map here. All right. Hey Jay. Yes, sir. Jay. Yes, sir. I, I hate to interrupt. But real quick, I will tell you. I got a hold of Steve. Yeah. He is. He will be back. I think he's almost done with what he's doing. He said he could hop on for a few minutes if you want me to get. Yeah. Him. Have, yeah. Have him come on. Give him the. Yeah. Yes. Have him come on. Yeah. Man, yeah. All right. Stephen okay. Chenault, owner of Troll War Games. That's a party happening here today. That's all this is. This, this yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, these some crowd two I, ones are the yeah. best. So Belladonna, we we started nineteen eighty. I started in seventy eight. This campaign's been going on since 1980. We've done 963 adventures. So you're right in the proper company here with with uh, with our our campaign. So don't feel like you're old. Trust me, I'm uh, 55. I feel it every day. Right there, Bill. You don't look at you. <laughs> Young and hard. <laughs> There's some discords, cannon fire, and the and the uh, Grail uh, Graalcon Discord. So the boogeyman about Tamira. We had squatter camps and we had them grow uh, up, uh, had them get bigger and bigger, and bigger in the southeastern corner of the city. There's a character named Lord Drarius the Deposed. He's the head of the Thieves Guild. Lord Drarius the Deposed is a fallen cavalier. He's a dual class cavalier, the old school cavalier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thief. Because he lost all his estates and wealth and just was found on hard Forsook times. the code and yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah. character neutral and so he became a thief. He's not a good guy. He's not a good guy. But the funny thing is the to the following. Back when we did our high port campaigning, Tim had his thieves guild with Skeeve. So Alan thought it'd be cool for his character Sam, the seventeenth level halfling thief now, always one level lower than Tim uh, than Tim's Lubin. No matter what level Sam goes, I raise Lubin one higher level just to annoy him. <laughs> so Sam says, Oh, you know what, I'll join I'll do an ins an extra thieves guild in there. Well, Lord Drarius was one of his thieves. And Lord Drarius always was failed at pickpockets, so he'd break the arm of whoever he was trying to steal and then just, right, you know, he'd always get arrested or whatever. So it got to a point where it got hairy in, in, in High Court. Well, Leuven, and, Leuven was there with Sam, and they both, Sam fled, just left, leaving his entire guild there defend for themselves. This is true. Am I made, this is this is actually happening. Before my time. time. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, so um, awesome. Thank you. Steven Chenault, everyone. So Lord Drarius swears lifetime revenge on Sam, finds out where he is in Altamira, goes there. When you get a chaotic neutral who's focused on doing what they're doing, Makes it to 13th level, so he's a dual class cavalier thief now, but, and he's the head of the Thieves Guild of Altamira. There are no halflings, dwarves, or gnomes allowed in the Thieves Guild. And that's where we are right now. So there's this whole plot. He took he got someone, 
<clears throat> Sam, uh, Sam's friend Boyd, Walt's character, okay, it, who is a, a, a cleric illusionist, neutral good. They uh, a bounty hunter knock, uh, knocked him unconscious, put a helm of opposite alignment on him. <laughs> so we have a neutral evil. But he was K new, right? K, neutral good. Oh, no, he's neutral he's good. Neutral okay, evil. Right. Hence, he does a lot of bad things now. And that's where the boogeyman of Altamira comes nice. from. Nice. There are rumors. There are rumors. There are rumors that there's a pit in his basement. <laughs> yes, because, you know, death falls. Sometimes it's up with death falls cast into it. Shut Steven! So I, I come into the stream, and the first thing I hear is you're harshing on gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> we love gnomes. I love them. It's great to see. This was, we had a game last night. John uh, Blue Box came to the game room, right. you know, Philly, uh, South Jersey. And we said, let's have an impromptu stream while John's still here. Just chat up D&D. &D. And so uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. We're talking Aired and we're talking uh, Altamira right now. And talking about John's Very plans cool. for, yeah. So, uh, I had, Steve, I so, had just finished a, a little piece on the Codex of the Plains and was about to break for lunch when Chuck, when Chuck. Awesome. You can eat on camera. I have, we have no problem with that. You need to. <laughs> you know, you it's very her, informal. Yeah. Take yeah. one of those little kumquats and uh, uh, take a bite. Yeah, uh, we saw that. It looked awesome. <laughs> you, lunch you, for the Dr. Tuck. Yeah, yeah, so you got a kumquat druid now. Hey, yeah. Steve, and I, I got to let you know, my players uh, that you met with for LMA a week ago, Wednesday, they are still buzzing from that conversation. Uh, oh, wow. Character ideas are flowing. Everybody is so excited. And I was telling Chuck in the stream here, uh, I've been reading the Andaluth at night, uh, which is very dense, uh, but it's creating a rich tapestry uh, for us. And we're super excited. That's, that is very, very cool. I'm glad you're getting into it. Yeah, that first, uh, the Andaluth can be very, it reads like a history almost, you know, it's, uh, a little slow. I love it, but it's it is, you know. I didn't say slow. I just said dense. It's just the Silmarillion of it's the Silmarillion of TLG. That's what I said. Yep. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yep. We're actually the the book is about sold out. The Codex of Verities, and we're going to reprint it. And everyone, we had a big meeting about it the other day. They want me to move the Andenuth to the back of it. Because it's so dense, it can be a little bit, yeah. you know. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. When I was uh, even like, uh, not last night, it was the night before last, because last night I was up till 1230 with these maniacs. Uh, but as I was reading through the Andanuth, I, there was a point at which I did kind of skip forward to see if there were any like maps or pictures. <laughs> there weren't. So. <laughs> so, so, so it's like it, it's like one of those uh, Tolkien novels. Like, really, oh, really like so oh my gosh! Just, this poem goes on seven pages. Yeah, finish around, how's it? <laughs> yeah, because Bill's got a, Bill's got a great adventure today for some crazy yeah, reason. Yeah, I volunteered to take a group of my son's friends to Six Flags today. I made yeah, a serious error. Oh, wow. wow. nice. oh, thank you. Yeah, it's only going to be, be 98 fun. today and super humid, so it'll be comfortable. Yeah, you can feel it already. <laughs> so, uh, John, uh, what? So you're going to make them all urchins younger, and then so we'll go back in time a couple of years. Is that what you want to do? <clears throat> you know, because uh, you're going to jump them ahead a few years, so we probably that probably makes sense. Yes, yeah. to run it back in timeline, okay. um, and then. Uh, have them skip forward ahead once the level zero stuff is over. So the idea is I'm going to let them create I'll have a uh, sort of black and white artwork for them as uh, young urchins, you know, 11 to 13 years old. And then we'll have those session zero moments. They'll build this joint backstory together. And then there will be a, a story mechanism. I don't know what that's going to be yet. It will be malleable based on what the characters do. And then there'll be a point at which it'll skip forward and they'll become, you know, young adults, first level but they will have this shared backstory together. So you're great. That's play. interesting. You, you're taking a, a break that I, my, my campaign has only moved forward nine days from when we started. So that, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so, so I kind of, it was shocked there. Well, what's that, 20 seconds? Four youths, they, they were just thrown into it and, and, and as teenagers, they're learning fast. So to wow. Speak. And, and, yeah, so no, they, I, I, yeah. I love that. That is a great way to do it. My only goal, because when I was started with like 11 to 12 to 13 year old kids, I didn't want the rest of the campaign to be 11, 12, 13, no. 14, 15 year old kids. I yeah. wanted to advance it to the young adult stage, but I felt yeah. like weaving this together uh, yeah. for me is going to create a neat sort of narrative story arc method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I actually plan to 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 take a, a hiatus on this campaign after another like 10, 12 sessions or 15 maybe when when, when we're done period and then start another set of characters in and and start an elven campaign. 
and and start them at a little bit older, meaning elven teenagers, like 80 years old or something like that. Right, and, right. And start running that and then run them in parallel and run it in tens like a month or something game world and then switch to the other ones for a little bit because that way we we'll, can, can keep them. So instead of having downtime for years or something, so so we'll see. I, I will see if that will work and have more of a mission-based campaign in the future. All right, Bill's got to go. So let's uh, one second and we'll get back to the, the Altimer discussions. I'm going to show you some of the figures that Bill has painted for the last two sessions. This is the Saturday night session and all these brand new loot studios, um, fungal creatures, right? That's a wow, fungal, that's cool. Fungal I could use some of those. I could use some of those Wednesday. Fungal, is that fungal brood. creatures? Yeah, yeah. This is from uh, this is from the adventure where we did uh, with Bones Ooh. and Darling and Mike uh -huh. Disney and uh, Crane was on Stay there. She, Mike she was great. Crane, right? She played great. Just wait, great. though. Just wait. It's coming. You guys haven't seen the Pièce de Résistance. Yeah, and then you have this uh, little fungal. Uh -huh. This is the one that this is the one that uh, put put Crane's character uh, in the sepia snakes that go actually when they found her. Yeah. Now this is from last night. These are the I call this a pox troll. These are going in the Altamir box set. Anything out of Altamir, we're going to put the monsters in. So this is like a disease-ridden troll that can disease you in it. As you can yeah, see. That one was a quick job. Don't Ooh, that that's one. nasty. Don't yeah. show that one too troll. Yeah, Did you see that mini, Steve? Look at that, that troll. Yeah, your, your thing and un, cool. undamaged by fire. Un, yeah, immune to fire, too. Immune to fire. <laughs> immune to fire. Immune to fire. Now, but here, here, check this one out, guys. We're I had nightmares. Abomination troll. I had nightmares last night. Ooh, look at that. Oh, oh. very cool. Yeah, so these are all build build jobs. Yeah, that one, five, that five heads, yeah. five arms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Bill, you are truly the master craft. Yeah, so, <laughs> Bill, I really appreciate you coming, man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take off. Man, John, for it was we'll great meeting you. Likewise. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll make it next year. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, I'll fly you down, man. Make it happen. <laughs> not that long a drive. It, it is a long four, drive. 14, 14 and a half. It's not you can like you can carpool. Yeah, but Jay can split the gas with him. There you go. Yes. Hey, <laughs> listen, look, my my limit is four hours in the car at any one time, man. It's just I'm not a you know, I drive enough for work. So, um, all right, Bill, be careful, man. He says as I drove seven hours to be here yesterday. Yes, so thanks, yeah, Jay. Yes. Bluntly, blatantly, bluntly honest. Everybody, have a good one. See you, Bill. Bill thanks. See you. See you, Bill. Anything else you need, take at take. I know you took the box from yesterday, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll just be back on uh, Sunday. All right. Sounds good. See you Sunday evening for a great uh, a great crafting stream. So uh, your great player, Heart of Adventures, um, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Thomas asked a question, and, and I'd, I'd love to answer it. And that was continue with the Thieves Guild discussion. So here's what's in Altamira. The Thieves Guild is does not allow short people in it because he is because Drarius the Deposed is afraid that it's going to be infiltrated. You know, that the, the, the halflings all, and the gnomes and the dwarves all allied with Sam. He he wants to, he's, you know, a par paranoid, a paranoid cat neutral. So with that, a, a second Thieves Guild has worked its way in. And this is where I got to pull from canon. We got to change the name. If anyone knows Roger Moore's article, Midgets in the Earth, and you've been had the 20th level halfling thief from it. It's kind of a joke. And, and uh, Stephen, if you remember, the name of that the group he leads is Spunk, Short People's Union for Nefarious Kleptomaniacs. Okay, I like that. So, Sexy but I got to change that because that's in the Dragon Magazine, right? I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I can't use Spunk. Right. So we got to change the name of that group. They're in Altamira now. A second Thieves Guild is in Altamira, so we have two Thieves Guilds fighting it out. There is no assassin. Oh, that's nice. Right. I like that. You like that? So we're gonna have yeah. So have yeah. you got the have you got the Kerner Ruck in there? What's that? We're talking about the, the the is it Kerner or Cerna? How do you pronounce it, Steve? It's, it's the Kerner Rook, and the, those are uh, those are lawful evil assassins. I'm not sure they would. <laughs> I mean, they're leftovers from from Unklar, and they're still trying to do their own thing. So they're right. around, but they were hugely powerful at one point. Jay, is there a beggar oh, skill? Uh, no, there's no beggar skill. Remember, the Altamir Bounty Hunters Guild is here, and you're going to have, and this is what I've been working on. You're going to have a new class for uh, Castles of Crusades. You're going to have the Bounty Hunter class. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have the Bounty Hunters Guild. That doesn't mean you can't make one up. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, I'm just curious. Yeah, what's beggars, yeah. But, the, you know, the Beggar's Guild can be a front for Spunk, I think. What, we got to change that name, remember. Mm -hmm. But that, that I think that's a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, now, if kids. you want to go, there's a uh, Halfling Guild, there's a Thieves Guild called Matt Muddles, Inc., which is run by a, a clan of Halflings. 
Nice. So and they could be the second guild if you want to go that far. Where are they out of? Where are they located out of? Uh, they're all over the place. I can't remember where their headquarters is. I think it's in Avernon, but they're all over the land of Earth. If, they got uh, great. If you can get uh, Freiburg, uh, they're, they're headquartered in Freiburg. Then. They're fully statted out in the uh, Monsters and Treasures of Aird. Okay. There's actually four or five levels in that organization that are statted out in there. Wow, that may is be that foot soldiers. Yeah, so foot soldiers up to whatever. So I can just use cool. the MP I can just use the NPCs that are already created, and then we can say, you know, when we do the publication for Greyhawk, this is it. We just say this is Spunk in this world. That's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's easy enough. All right, great. What's the name of it again? Muddles Inc. Muddles Inc. I like that. Muddles Inc. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. See, look at how easy this is. I'll be this right is back. A, I've got a real important thing. A work, no problem. A work brainstorming session. Call. So, Stephen, I really appreciate you hopping on with Anna and us. And uh, so, um, advice for John when he starts a campaign up. Oh, I think I think the approach you're taking is badass. I love that idea of running. Would you, how many sessions are you gonna do? Like six to eight or so? With yeah, your, I'm know? gonna let it kind of flow organically, Stephen. If I had to guess, I think six to eight. But you know, it could be it could be fewer or more depending on. I don't I don't like over scripting uh, in my games, but, right. but my my guess would be six to eight sessions. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's cool because then you get no matter what you do forward, whether you split them up after that five years later, whatever however you're gonna do right. it, they've got that background already built into it. Yeah, uh, and that's that's always kind of the thing I think that breaks for me a lot in games is how to get these five or six knuckleheads together that seems realistic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I, what you're doing is cool. Well, thank yeah. you. I'm oh, sorry about Anna. No, I was going to say I chose a small little. Uh, it used to be a town, but now I use invaded it, so it's only a village. And when it comes to population, because most of the population is wiped out, so it was very small little circle of NPCs and 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 the small area and the rest of the world was so scary so I knew they will stay put so I created a, a, a walled in little sandbox that, that I knew they wouldn't escape from the first bit so to speak and and then I let themselves figure out what they wanted to do and what they wanted to be so to speak in that sandbox yes. they, were, they only gave them a very much blank sheet to work from and I just gave them the the, the, the parameters around it and then that they all had to be humans and they were that old that was it no I like that Anna. and that's yeah, a not setting based why because shield lands that's why they have to be human but Altamira, yeah. we have all races. Mm -hmm. I mean, half yeah, half yeah. orc, half ogre is even mm -hmm. good. So yeah. right. you that you set for per campaign of yeah, what, what you want, so to speak, for your theme. Yeah, what you allow. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and and what I like about the lore, uh, the lore of Aird, what we're discussing uh, today, the lore of Altamira, to me that is the that's the canvas. Um, as a DM, like all of you, once the story starts. That is never a, a set of manacles that prevent this. Like maybe right. if, the, if the players want to create a third guild inside the free city of Altamira and they have so, a method and a story to do that, that's what's going to happen. But all of this creates that canvas on which to paint your, you know, your art. I would highly suggest this though, John, and this is just me that one character and we allow multi-classing, you know, should have a, be aligned, get into the bounty hunters guild because it's so unique to Altamira. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's not an assassin. Like one character do that because it's really a cool class too. So that would be a suggestion. So, yeah, I've only seen that as an NPC uh, in your game. Uh, 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 Mandy your plays, game. Mandy and the Slot Squad squad plays a, a bounty hunter, a Shadow Mage bounty hunter. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I've got your the original Matrix and I've worked off that too. But yeah, yeah what, um, maybe send me the workup if you would on the yeah, bounty sure. hunter, the bounty hunters guild, because I don't think my players even know yeah. that's an option and they may want to tag into that. Yeah. I, I'll, I will send up the, um, uh, the class itself. The bounty hunters guild is right here in all these notes that I'm writing right now. Okay, so. just the class. <laughs> so, yeah. just the class. Yeah. Steven. Yeah. <laughs> Submissions. Yeah. As you can I see, Steven, there is writing in this book. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think one of the, the things that I think it's it's good to 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 start yeah. doing is that you set up a number of factions. I had three factions in the village, so That's to speak, idea. that 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 were operating, and I didn't present any of them as as automatically allied with with the 
play a characters or opposed to the player characters. The player characters were kind of just neutral. They were just like the background population, so to speak. And and so the players, one of their first things as players was to choose if they wanted to ally themselves with one of the, mm -hmm. the factions or so on. So so I so the first sessions were basically to to secretly introduce the various factions in in a subtle way to the party and let this party see if they wanted to to cling on to to one of the factions or not. And and they did, so to speak. They 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 started hovering around one and then you have one player who was like, oh that's so cool. And he ran off and and and, and started soliciting with another <laughs> faction and so on. So there you had a part of the, the story. And and so so give them a little bit. And then I had the, the the strangers coming in, so to speak. And they were a new faction and they were kind of scary but potential had lots of potential. So I wanted to see if the characters wanted to just cling on and 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 run off with these guys. But they didn't. They they started a revolution on session three instead. So, so yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's nice about those settings, though, is the players, if it's not, if, if you're running it, and uh, it sounds like this is the way you're going to do it, John, if there's no set, you know, scripted thing that's going, the characters can do whatever they want, but you've got this material, whether it's Muddles Inc. or the, the Bounty Hunters Guild, whatever, lingering behind it, that you can immediately develop. You've got just the skeleton of which now you can develop it to go with the characters, mm -hmm. whichever direction they're going. Yeah. That's what makes that stuff uh, that's not too onerous, you know, easy to play. It's why Greyhawk fit so well when I started playing it way back in the 70s, whenever I got that folio edition, because there was just enough information in Greyhawk to get you going, yep. and now you're going. And you can exactly, go you know? exactly. Make it your own. That's exactly yep. it. And that's right. the whole point of any in campaign. I want John yep. to make his uh, Altamira his own, and then go out into the air beyond that, you know, and have it in yeah, a base right. setting. And that's what the box is. And that's is. part of the, yeah. so part of the philosophy that went into the design of air was I gave, there's mountains of background material so that you can actually, and, and then of course the world restarts as we've talked in a couple other streams, so that you can make it your own. But now that when you've got an elf that's 300 years old, they have a point of reference, you know, in the history and the mythology that they can lean on and the CK, GM, whatever you're doing. I can run with it. So it's, yeah, it's one of those, it's, it's nice to have the, the, the fluff there mm -hmm. without too much crunch. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a hook on every page, uh, John, which, which is great as a DM. Chuck, you pinned it in my discord, uh, our personal list. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Pin messages. So Jay, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. On the bounty hunters guild, can you be a member of the guild without being the class bounty hunter? Yes, and I'm going to give you an example. I apologize up front, Anna. Who am I going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> you can say it, Anna. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I should know, but a uh, goblin and a bugbear. One's oh, a okay. Poo poo and caca. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm looking down, working. I'm like, what am I? Hearing? All right, let me get yeah, the, it's, let it's me awesome. get the figures. It, it, the, yeah. the cutest NPCs I've seen in, in Jay's campaign, the, 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 the silliest, cutest little NPCs. So uh, we have a, uh, we have a bugbear. He's a bounty hunter. Okay. See, look, I, I, we have humanoids playing in classes. And then his yeah. buddy, the fighter, he's a fighter. They're both members of the Aftermare Bounty Hunters Guild. So, yes, yeah. the answer is yes. You can have non-bounty hunter classes part of the guild. Absolutely. Absolutely, Stephen. That's, the, that's a good question. So yeah, I try to open up all the guilds in air to multiple classes. So when you're playing, you know, it's not all classes, but when you're playing, you can, if you want to join the cult of swords and you're a cleric, you can do it. Uh, you know, however you go. Chuck, which subfolder is this? Should be uh, under the current. Current character manager? Yeah. All right. Uh, which, uh, uh, the, the social image or, um, or the alpha preview? Download yeah, both? preview. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if I can run them right from here. Probably if you put it in the source. All right, watch. All right, everyone, I'm going to try and run this right now. Let's see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen. If I crash, <laughs> if I crash, sit tight. <clears throat> I tried to copy it over. It just a tried black to... nothingness. Oh my God, we're I in the I tried planes. to copy it over. Right, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to download it to my machine first. All right. We're in the abyss. Let me download it to my machine. Yep. Oh, da, 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 download. In the oh. meantime, I think we can tell to the viewers saying that when you run a sandbox, you don't have to develop everything going on for the for the long haul, so to speak, before you start. You only have to be a session or two ahead of the party. 
and and that's, that's the key so to speak yes so, great so, point so, so what you need yeah what you need to do is that to be very keen on on the the idea of listening to the players banting so you can kind of get a sense of where they're heading and also put out breadcrumbs very gently because players are looking for any shiny thing and they will run in that direction wildly so to speak if you say that oh there are cool caves out in those mountains boom they will run off like crazy so be very gentle when you describe things that are far away so to speak so 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 make sure you you keep the dis the description of things in, within the the parameters where you want them at the moment so to speak and then present shiny things when you're ready so attempt number two. Oh, i got it troll lord gates join the fray whose voice is that i think it's steve i see the new character manager I'm pretty excited with it. We looked at the, or this morning, the spell development tab, which oh, is That was a race in Traveler, the, the Bard, or, or, or how do you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It's exciting. Yeah, the spell tab's really nice. You don't have it initiate, it's been developing. It's going to be nice. It's got yeah. memorization. Yeah, I think we've got a few more months of development on this thing, but I am stoked on this, this character man. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. TLG's crossing over into the new world. Yeah. It's not really that new, it's about 20 <laughs> It's okay, it's like though. 20 years old, yeah. All right. <laughs> Drag you into the 21st century here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not exactly the way you're doing it all. No, it's it's, really, it's, really, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's simple. Yeah. Awesome. I see you have a drop down with a lot of magic items in there already too, correct? I, I'm not sure, he, he's plugging in the equipment, I know, but I'm not sure what beyond that he's gotten to. Yet. Okay, okay. You know, I, I don't use many apps, but I'm going to have to download this and learn how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Might be important. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pole arms. Yep. That is awesome. I use the Adger all the time in one of my games. If you know what that is. You know what that is? Anna, you should know I, what it is. What? what? Very what? cool. Ad, an Adger. It's a common Viking uh, pole arm. Oh, okay. Uh. See, I they don't have that. any actual real ones to look at, so it's a term they use for rare Viking okay. uh, pull right. anyway. right. Very and cool. You know, stuff. Davis is working on that the new Arms and Armor book, and it's going. He yeah. is getting every obscure weapon he can possibly find. That's how it's going to be about even monster weapons. Long. So, uh, does he have the Dacian Falks in there? Probably. He is sending me the craziest weapons. I've never heard of half of these things. Uh, he's just scouring everywhere. Uh, so, Stephen, if you could send me a copy of that, I have a bunch of weapons that we use that are crazy in our game. Like the, like, you know, the Sayaks, the Falks, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. and, so, I'd love to add add in some of them, uh, too. So and and some know. of the weapons don't need to be mechanically unique. They can just be significant visually, culturally, yeah, yeah. visually, and, yeah, I, and stuff like that. You I might love need that. to carry it That's to blend in with the population or something like that. So. Yeah. Davis was yeah. an anthropologist before all this, so he's uh -oh. he's going into, oh yeah, he's going into all of it. So, <laughs> I've yeah. already had to cut his entries down from about three or four paragraphs. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're one because nice. it's, just, it's just too much info. <laughs> oh, Vamp, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're live, Vamp. We're just hanging out, just shooting. Yeah, we're we're live. Absolutely. So this, yeah. Uh, what do you think that thing? I mean, I can't remember on the on the Indiegogo. What was the when was it supposed to be released, Steve? Do we have a time on that? I don't remember. Uh, so he is shooting for October, but uh, he's a little nervous because some of the stuff he's still kind of you know the what was it the Mac getting it onto the Mac was something new to him. That's been challenging. Yeah. Yeah. So so there may be a month or two added to it. So we're hoping by Christmas is the plan. Now 
it does not have, and we got to talk about this, the Adventures Backpack characters, nor the Player's Guide. The aired characters in there, uh, oh, and time. he and I, when we talked about it, I restricted him to the Player's Handbook. I said, just focus on this book. Um, but we're getting uh, quite a few comments about those other classes. So we, we will see if those land. If they land, it's going to obviously add a little bit of time to the, T, the the TLG the TLG ad is uh, that's being worked on as we speak, right? I mean, it's it's yeah yeah, yeah. he's it's roughly been, yeah. Yeah. his estimation about a sixth of the way through it. All right, good. It's yeah. coming. That's yeah. so that's going to be awesome. And it's going to be another yeah, enhancement I, 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 if you're playing in whatever system or whatever game. So it's Real, just it, I think it's a good way to bring Castles and Crusades out to you know a lot of these younger people play people that you know in the low twenties and mm -hmm. teens. They have a completely different experience than we do. You know, I, we've talked before, and I've mentioned it to you, Jay. I don't know if I've mentioned it to you, John, but watching this TikTok of this young lady, this was right after COVID's kind of breaking apart and everybody's doing their thing. But she had been playing D&D for about 18 months, and she, had, she, she does this TikTok where she says, you know, I just learned that some people actually get at the table and play this game. Yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah. You know, for a minute. For a minute, I thought, are you crazy? And I thought, well, she has no idea. Why would she think to sit of at the course, table? Of course, right. Have, wow. <laughs> there's no You don't have to these days. I run all my no. games online now, and, and I'm actually <laughs> starting to really like it. There are some, some huge benefits to it. First, I have my computer set up with all the resources, all the maps, everything on available right at I don't have, need to, to, to pack a bag. I don't need to put it on my laptop. Yeah. And, and it's all there. I have my kitchen, my my bathroom, and and stuff next yep, to so I access to it, and Just and hanging. I can play with friends from all over the world if I want to. So so there are some benefits to play online too. Well, and, yep. and younger gamers, they're already playing online already, so they're used yeah. to all of the headsets and the cameras. So, yeah. so my caveat is I will I will zoom in as many people as as want to in a game, like you know the science specials all, but I'm still playing on my damn table. Yeah. <laughs> You're the best of both have, worlds. Yeah. Yeah. I've not made the adjustment yet to, <laughs> to gaming yeah. online. I am trying, but I have yeah, not made it. I, yeah, I, I, I started a, a couple of years ago, and, and, and it was hard at first because there is a lot of upfront planning, and, and you yeah. need to set up the stuff. You need to have meaning how do you present the information? What tools do you use for maps, ro die rolls, character sheets, talk, and stuff? And you have to figure out the options for that and and right. it depends on the play style and and your the tech level of you and your players and, and and stuff but once you have figured it out i think it's much easier to run games once you have them have the whole setup done so to speak it's it's easier to run it online my, than my it is biggest right problem there. with the way i run the game physically because if you've ever watched me at like those games i run at gary con and gen con where i got 24 30 players in there I always stand up and I start yeah. walking yeah. back and forth and I'll do it even at my own table. Yeah, and, right. I stand yep. up and I start moving around. Mm -hmm. You got you can't do that. You gotta watch the vid from John last night but doing the the the, the, the sword <laughs> the sword thrust. He stands up that's a sword thrust last night. Yeah. We're and you know, that's our game. Our game is we do not say yeah, it had much more yeah. flurry. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't yeah. this, it was, you know, it was this. Yeah. <laughs> I think the Zoom equivalent no. is that you mute everybody and, and just image, well, look, right, make yeah, your own as, picture bigger and yeah, talk to yourself. As somebody, I run a game every single week that's everybody in the room together. Yeah. And I run a game every single week that's streamed all over the world, people in Canada and other places. They each have their own unique flair and style. And Annie, yeah. you're right. Like yeah. when you, there is a there's a containment element when it's all streamed and you can have everything right there and you can really control the visuals. Um, but there's also there's something to be said for sitting around the table. Oh yeah, together. I I will and, still love yeah. to have a local so, game as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you to the audience. We are in the top live stream D and D stream going on right now. It's, Ooh, this is impromptu. Just, just, it, impromptu. It doesn't count the critical role we run for that has four thousand people watching, it, of course, <laughs> right now. But yeah, so thank you all. It's because Anna's here. Yeah, it's a no. the whole crew. So, so um, the funny thing with John last night, he fit right in with the group. With all, all my players were here, but Alan. But but he he gets up and you got to watch it. So he gets up to the top. He gets up to the top of that um, uh, um, abbey there. Sneaks all the way up and goes behind the cleric mage. And goes to backstab her, right? And misses horribly twice. And she turns around, and the character looks just like Marquesa from the Slavers. And it's a Marquesa clone, one of her copies, Marquesa the Silver. And he like almost shit himself. 
<laughs> and that's the great thing. It missed both the, and then on the, on the final fight, yeah, it's easy being back. Uh, but you did backstep and kill. kill I, I did. I, I but, but 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 only because you were you were generous with the specials. Yeah, uh, that's, but overall, that's part uh, of it. Jay has a great crew here, and for those that have not played at a table like this, I mean, I've played in oh, person, that's... but I've never played at an eight foot by eight foot table. That's uh, fine. And the way this creates a sense of scale and movement, it's a, it's a much more kinetic game uh, mm-hmm. than I've ever played in. It was really, really fun to be here last night. Thanks. And uh, yeah, and that's just the way we like doing it. I mean, every game, it, Steve, you know, every single game, every single DM is completely different. Mm-hmm. And that's the wonder of the charm of D&D or any RPG system. Everything is different. You do it a little differently than Chuck and Anna and, you know, and that's the wonder of it. And, and, and that's why I love and, and- it so much. The joy is I've watched a whole lot of, I've read a lot of blogs and watched a lot of uh, TikToks and videos of new DMs really worried about their skills in DMing, they're, they're nervous the about the audience, you know, the players and all of that stuff. But generally speaking, most players just want to play. And you're going to, you know, once you start DMing, it's not going to take you long to figure out how to play with these guys and, and, it, and everyone has a good time. And I tell people all the time, if they come back the second time, you're, you're, you're doing good. Just keep Keep barreling along with what you got. Yep. Well said. Well said. And I'm sorry, Thomas. I'm pretty sure that's a load bearing wall that I have between <laughs> well, my, my game room and that, that, that game plot. So I don't know if I can knock that out. But uh, aside from the uh, spousal unit, that may also be an issue. Uh, there's always uh, steel, steel beams and stuff like that. Yeah. Know? So, yeah, but supports. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, <laughs> when we moved here in 2013 and we came and we were looking at the house and we saw, I saw this basement, I'm like, this is it. This is, I mean, you can see it run, it runs the length of the entire house into this big area where we play in. I mean, it, it runs. runs. Yeah, so, <laughs> look at this. That's amazing. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's big. So, uh, but like my wife leaves me alone down here. So, yeah. And Anna's been here too. Anna's been oh, yeah, here. it's great. So, yeah. It, yeah. And, and there's like a game material that puts a lot of game stores to shame, so to speak. There's oh, yeah. D&D stuff in that basement that well, puts it's just, game stores. It's our niche. It's the way we play. I, I, yeah. I, but I'm really, I'm so excited about this, uh, um, you know, with what John's doing and uh, and the honor that Anna and I have to, to do something for, for you, Stephen and Chuck. I'm really excited. Yeah. It's, I got to get on the ball and I got to start punching. I don't want to punch out crap uh, writing, though, Stephen. That's my thing. I don't know. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, this when did you time. decide to stop doing that, Jay? What's that? When did you decide to stop doing that? Stop doing what? what? <laughs> <laughs> you got me good there. At least I haven't said, I haven't said turtle yet. He, he decided then and there. To do that. Yeah. yeah. I haven't, yeah. I've always said that uh, turtle, turtle, turtle. There you go. Yeah. So. Mm. Jay has a bigger gaming space, more minis, and more set pieces than well, you know, true. it's, it's yeah. 42 it's true. years of accumulation, so cool. you know, yeah. so, um, Steven, uh, have you ever played this style? Have you ever played, a, 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 a you know, using Dwarven Forge or using just uh, an HO scale terrain or anything back in the day? Or was it more, was it more the big, the big mat with the, with the, with the markers and uh, do out your dungeon crawl? Yeah, I'm just curious. So we've got to, I've done kind of all of it. David started buying miniatures way back in the, you know, the Woe Be Gone days. So we've right. always had miniatures. And I started DMing probably regularly in 81, 79, 81, something like that. Uh, and, and I've tried just about everything. Hi. I've used miniatures. I've used Dwarven Forge. I've used Fat Dragon Games. Uh, paper yeah. terrain stuff that you have Tall to assemble. Stuff. Uh, battle maps, big battle maps, small battle maps. And at the end of the day, I've even used, and I know you guys have done this, I'll put dice across the table. Okay, here are the orcs. Here are you guys. You are the D4s, you know, <laughs> Just, you know, whatever you got. Oh, yeah, we call it the fishy box of all the slag yeah. little minis. Yeah. But I think a few years ago, I don't know, it's probably been a decade now, I just kind of stopped using any of it. And I just do all theater of the mind. And part of the problem that I had with with using yeah. the, the Dwarven Forge stuff and managers and stuff, I kept having to walk around the table to move stuff around to get... Or I would say, Mac, I need that miniature move two hexes over. And it just broke up my descriptive flow. So I just began slowly just dropping it. And now the table's just filled with dice and Dr. Pepper cans. And, you know, oh, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, good so, so, yeah, just real, just real two, two things. I want to I talk to what Stephen just said, but I want to come back earlier to this idea of sandbox and uh, you know giving people that open world, as uh, Anna said, those cautiously placed breadcrumbs 
Um, I, I love all of that. Uh, we had an LMA, my Lore Masters Arcanum chat show on this uh, a few weeks ago, and I fully agree with that. But I also think there should be meta narratives or story arcs that are happening in the world which are happening irrespective of whether or not the players right. choose to pay attention to them, yep. right? So uh, as an example, uh, you know, Bilbo could have chosen to stay in the Shire and not followed and, you know, gone to, you know, Lonely Mountain and all of that. But that would not have changed the fact that Sauron was attempting to return. and that there. So these meta narratives or meta arcs then form the ribs or the backbone of your world. Yeah. And right. the players, they're, they're still, but they can choose their, their individual paths uh, and, you know, as that meta narrative comes along, they can decide to jump on that or not jump on that. But if they ignore it, it doesn't mean it stops happening. You know, if yeah. the end of the uh, world is nigh and they choose not to stop the end of the world, that's on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. And that also creates that urgency, sense of urgency. The players need to act now. They need to do something, meaning an option should present itself and the players should know that, OK, we can grab it or it will let go. Yeah. And, and and meaning that they needs to so they don't stop and overthink things. Maybe exactly. The players to 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 that way you you force them to when you want them to act by the seat or the pants present something that will come and go quickly and and they just like yeah they need to jump on it now and that's how you could get more fun more more kind of spontaneous play to to act and there should be multiple stories and exactly also, yeah and they're also important with the with the tempo some of these stories are quick things that happen during a session some of them are long term they play out over meaning they might not get into the crescendo until the next campaign 50 well sessions yep yep so that's how you do it you and especially if you want to introduce the horror part of it that is not something you, you don't scare the players over a session you you scare them over 30 sessions now you're talking my language long ago and <laughs> yeah. that will come back and haunt them 30 sessions later exactly so that, and, and always think about the time scale there are short things interacting bantering in the inn with the local bum that is kind of annoying them or something like that. That's the short thing that happens in, in a few rounds in a few minutes. And then you have the things that, that happens in a session. And then you have the things that happens over a couple of sessions. And then you have things that happen over the whole campaign. And and that's why you should, uh, John, it's so perfect. You always need to have these bigger stories. What exactly. war is coming, what apocalyptic thing or good things and, and stuff is happening in the world and that you can let the players figure out and tell them gently so to speak precisely that, precisely yeah. and then to steven's point you know telling those stories whether i'm using minis or vtt or theater of mine steven yeah. I, I i'm i'm with you on that like sometimes i like a lot of tabletop minis i've got uh, a 15th of what Jay has down here, maybe, and maybe a 20th. <laughs> um, but I have enough for most of my games. But there are times where I just, I shut that down and we go pure TOM. Um, yeah. And there are times that I jump to a VTT like Tailspire because I can leap between, you know, the forested mountains to the snow-capped peaks, to the dry deserts, to the lakeside, the village. So that in, in a second, I can have that pulled up. But ultimately, to me, the game always has to be ready to fall back to theater of mind. Uh, because the game that, that I fell in love with, you could sit around a table with a few friends, tell stories, and your imagination can run wild with those stories. So to me, as, as Jay does, these, these things are elements which add flavor to the game, but you can absolutely break from those things yeah. and tell great stories. It's positioning. Oh, yeah. It's, oh my God, ranges. I mean, So I, helpful I, for combat. We, hear, we, we heard this on a discussion just recently. Uh, um, I think Dave Walters was talking about this. They need to put publications about people get lost in theater of the mind combat in 5e. Oh, they can't yeah. forget where they, you know, the positioning and all. There's got to be a way to describe that better uh, to make to make that flow. But uh, I'm not trying to make an addition war here. So I'm just saying that that there's there's pluses and minuses to every style of play. By the way, I, uh, I, I, good. And I was going to say one of the things I actually like about theater of the mind. Uh, when you describe something, and whether you do it really well or, or poorly or whatever, it doesn't matter. Once you describe something, the four or five players at your table, everyone's going to hear something different. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. Focus in on something different. They're going to pull something different out of that. And I absolutely love that. That throws that fog of war onto the table yep. so that there's a little bit more chaos and a little bit more confusion, just like in real life. You know, mm -hmm. stuff comes at all of us fast. 
we all adjust and, and shift to it differently. And if you can carry that over at the table, then that's an even better thing because people are a little bit confused about going what's going on, which is good because combat yeah. can be extraordinarily stressful and lots going on. Whereas when you have the VTT and managers and all that stuff, it's pretty clear, you know, where everybody is and what's what's happening. Now I will use that though. I'll pull the managers out when there's 40 orcs attacking, you know, ah, okay, we got to get the managers out. Just, sure. Just get you. But, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, I, I just like the side of it. I, I yeah. really do. And when it comes to explaining things uh, in the world, where, whether it's a room or an NPC they're meeting or, or, or a monster or, or just a situation in general, try, I always try to explain it from the character's perspective. Meaning if the character is a first level rookie or zero level something that never been out seen an orc in his life, never right. been outside the village, then you, you, you can be very kind of when they were leaving the village first time and they're walking along the road, you can just say, oh, there's some trees next to the road over there and, and something. And, and, and the characters walk up and then they get ambushed by, by the, the orcs and, and they're in the forest. But let's say it's a party of 15 level rangers and, and fighters <laughs> and stuff that have been around the bend a few times and, and, and been through 25, 30 battles and three wars and whatnot. Then you will tell the, 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 the characters or the players that up there, there's the road is going uphill a bit. Up there on the right, there's trees that are very close to the road. There's a, a good spot for someone to ambush you if they want to. There is no cover on the left side. There's a bank that is hard to climb up to and stuff like that because the characters would see that. They will understand it and so on. So treat the intelligence and the wisdoms, both of the characters and the monsters, as vital stats in how you explain things. Very cool. That's, That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. That's why using things like, you know, what, what you call in 5e, uh, like a passive perception role or whatever yeah. mechanism mm -hmm. you use. Yeah. And I like right. using the, if there's a one, if there's a fumble, they don't know it. I'm the one making those rolls. If it, I don't care if you're a 15th level ranger, if I roll yeah. a one on that, then I may tell you, you think there's something there that's not there. Or exactly. I, I, yeah, that's yeah, how you use like, with illusions or whatever. I, I, you, you, yeah. Yeah. Let, let's carry out this one big thing. DMing for your friends and DMing in a game is way different than DMing live stream. So we've got to take that because we're talking I DMing, yeah. just normal DMing sessions. Mm -hmm. A stream session tends to be a little different because of the oh, yeah. production and, you know, you gotta have some. You gotta have some action. You got. You know, there's a lot of different things going on in, in that. So we're talking. Yeah. A lot of this discussion is playing with well your said. friends, not worrying yeah. about. That's right. Not worrying about the stuff, John. The, the BS, John, and I got to go through. And Chuck, <laughs> and Chuck too, which is fun. I mean, we, trust me, we we love it. By the way, so for Altamira, these are two great books uh, from Castle Crusade City books, Callus and uh, Escadia. Yeah, that I've been using a lot. And uh, by the way, when I was on vacation, I, I still uh, I got the corner here, got it all wet when I was on the beach one day. <laughs> and so I was posting them. So just note, these are really, both very good for uh, everyone to take a look at uh, if you want to get a published city setting already by Castles and Crusades. So um, Casey Christopherson wrote that to Escadia. A very good book. Escadia. Yeah. I do that wrong. I, I pronounce it wrong every time. Oh, how do you pronounce <laughs> Escadia? Escadia? Escadia, I think. And I always oh, say wow. Escadia. Oh, okay. Yeah. He has corrected me for over a decade now. So, <laughs> so we got we got 20 minutes before John's got to head out of here and get a, go to the Philly airport. So uh, we got some questions or some comments, or uh, we'll just keep this uh, general discussion going. I'm so happy how well this is, this is going. Yeah, I can't believe we yeah. just popped in on a Friday morning. Yeah. We got 70 people or something yeah. watching it, it, it's, it's nuts. awesome. It's nuts. Yeah. So uh, I'm pushing hard to get some writing. Continue done. I'm just pushing hard to get – to get uh, map making done. Steven, I've heard from uh, in your uh, Tuesday and Thursday uh, show discussions, paper is way out. So we're looking at like a year out, right? With the paper issue. Well, it depends on how we go. We're probably going to hardcover yours. So it's they're they're telling me, we just got a quote on the next printing of the CKG. They're saying, what is this, August? So they're telling me they can get it to me in Thank January. You. So it's kind of closed up a little bit. We're at okay. seven months. <clears throat> but it's still a it's still a huge it used to just a year and a half ago it was four weeks five weeks was extraordinary to wait and now it's six to eight months so yeah yes, very cool yeah we got to, we still got 20 minutes here so um but that's okay because we're gonna do this one time and we're gonna do it right I don't want to put out something half ass. I'm going to be blunt, right? Now, now, Jay, you said you were mentioning, you were a little bit worried about a writing. Now, this is something we've never done that Tim, who heads up all the editors, has always wanted to do is 
assign an editor as you're writing it. So when you finish a section, oh, that'd be great. Goes to the editor. The editor starts working on it. So if you've got something in your writing, like we got one of our writers who's using tense, he's using the wrong tense pretty continuously, and had had that been caught at the beginning of the manuscript, it would have made the right. whole editing process. <laughs> much, yeah, much that, you could, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Catch it, yeah. you know, nip it in the bud, so to speak. So if you if you want to send over something, something that you've written, uh, Tim I and I can sit down and get get an okay. editor signed. And, yep. uh, awesome. I'm gonna yeah, finish, finish up the whole bounty hunter section and I'm gonna send it over, and then because that's gonna be unique to to the game completely, and then then I'll get good critique from that. And I'll, yeah, that's a good a good start point. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, Thomas, here's here's the answer to that question. Altamira is a, a has three major keeps, actually four major keeps, and it. it was originally a, a a military installation area, defense for defensive purposes to protect trade routes. It's, they, they walled off, and a city grew with inside of it. The poor are not wandering around like they are in Greyhawk for two reasons. The boogeyman of Altamira, number one. Number two, a lot of them are being lured away by this tongued, well, you know, oiled, tongued individual saying, you know, they don't care about you. Come with us. And they are disappearing into the Twilight Forest or this forest if you're in Greyhawk. And I already gave Stephen the cover idea for the uh -oh. Free City of Altamira, right? And these yep. weird beast men are appearing now. Uh, and this all has to do with, this is, this is going on in the campaign now. It's a long-term plot. So, and some of them have yeah, like these, these minis here, the beast men minis, more, more Bill and Master Crafter minis. I so, love those. Yeah. So we got, a, we got a long-term campaign art going with, uh, with the beast men and who's behind what nemesis is behind this. And it turns out it is this, Hey Tim. It's the son of uh, uh, a demon prince, you may know. So it'll be fun. There'll be some fun things going on. Uh, uh, I there. love the whole idea of the beast man. I've yeah. always loved beast yeah, man. Yeah, correct. They're, they're actually, so a lot of them are corrupted in townsfolk. <laughs> demon prince, huh? That's how you read it. Demon <laughs> prince's son, yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. We already got approval. Steven said there's no way we can use that 100% that name. For the, for the main demon and the prince's side. The, yeah. the cultists aren't middle class. So. <laughs> yes. So, and that, they are preying on the, they are preying on the less wealthy, of course, because they're easy targets. There's a lot of wealth in Altamira because it's filled with adventurers. Mm -hmm. And adventurers tend to have a lot of wealth. But there's merchants. The merchant clan, which is uh, begins with the name Von, Von Poppin, Von Kessel, all them. The merchant clan is kind of corrupt and, and, and you know, just like a business mm -hmm. cooperative mm -hmm. would be. So there's mm -hmm. a lot, there's not all just goodness in the city. And that's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. It's a, it's, we've made it a fun place to venture in and around. So hopefully that helps you with that, that question. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I like that. Well, and you've placed it beautifully in air because there's tons of stuff outside of Altamira to do too. It's there's perfect. Twilight. The Twilight, Stephen, the Twilight yeah. Forest and the Sus line up and you take Fontenot and you just flip Celine south and you've got, and you're fine, right? I can you're, put all these, all the Elven estates in Celine going, is it Fontenot or Fontenot? Uh, I, I call it Fontenot, but I never Fontenoche. correct people when they pronounce these words. Yes. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we can put every single Elven estate we have in Celine in Fontenot. Right, it's perfect because that's where the yeah, Elven estates are in your game. Where it's one hundred percent fantastic. So, should we if, if we publish an, an upside down version? Yeah, it's one, almost, one, it's almost here for the map. So it's, we have like north side. We flip it. It's almost upside down. I'm looking for <laughs> the a poster there, version man. both ways. So, so yeah. uh, John, since you are the special guest here, we got sure. fifteen minutes. Run, run with this, man. Run, run with what you want to talk about. No, no. So yeah, let, let's, so let's come back to this. You know, the idea of Altamira as a you know fairly prosperous city with lots of adventurers. What I'm looking here to start out, um, I envision. Again, I'm not sure what all the the smaller stories will be. I'll let the players really influence that. But I see sort of the gritty uh, city, a thieves guild involved, under city. Uh, so I'm looking for the right sort of wards or, or alleyways or streets of Altamira, uh, which would kind of play to that. And then, as I've told Stephen, I mean, he and I, have, along with Chuck, we pulled on so many threads of the broader uh, aired uh, tapestry that I think those can have the the little cars that come by, as Ann and I were talking about, to, to tell bigger stories and see which ones the player uh, catch on to. So um, let's just throw some ideas out here. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I love stories you know, like Fafford and the Great Mouser, or if you've read Scott Lynch, the Gentleman Bastard series, that's a fantastic one with a really gritty underworld or uh, thing. Even go back to 
uh, you know, the, the saga of the free city, you know, and, and, you know, Gord and those thieves sort of, world. the thieves were yeah. all of that. Right. So that's, that's some of the vibe I want the early part of the campaign to have. And I just like to throw that out to the panel and just get thoughts or suggestions. Yeah. Well, you got a lot of, you got a lot of, uh, rivalries you can play up real early in the city you do because there's also churches the uh, and steam's giving me it was kind of to give me a conversion truck for greyhawk deities to uh air deities so we have that so we can change them all over you can have a lot of religious aspect you can have organizations coming out of the twilight forest right steven i mean do you have uh, any that you have written up that we can just add right in besides the cult of the sun and that's s-o-n by the way what what about the guilds and order books steve so the guilds and orders has got it's kind of a, a prelude to what's coming out hopefully later this year we've hired a guy named finn uh, to, to completely expand that huge trade guilds and uh character based skills you know like wizards guilds and whatnot uh, and but in aired right now i think there's about maybe 20 odd guilds all of which most of which you could probably find in altamira good the cult of the swords would be there all kinds of stuff like that there's four or five thieves guilds one chuck mentioned uh, and this this become the counter roof become one of those thematic things I think John that would be interesting and be interesting to put them to Altamira. So the counter roof were essentially when Unkla ruled the world, the counter roof were the assassins. Uh, they went around and killed anybody that you know this this uh, uh, didn't obey correctly mm -hmm. and what have you. Uh, and like all worshippers of Unkla, they were burned at the stake. Once the wars ended, anyone in that guild was destroyed. So the guild now has gone completely underground. And when I think of the counter rook, I think of Carl Edward Wagner's, you know, his cane stories where there's these cults hidden in the wood, you know, far, far forgotten archaic knowledge and type of stuff. So embedding something like that in Altamira would be kind of cool That's and having awesome. these kids mm -hmm. run up, you know, just, you know, graze it a little bit, not fully go into it with these people but it would be an interesting thematic yeah we don't want to see any of these kids on an altar in session three so right. that's, no, that's... Well, no, 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 no. i don't mean going to get i mean just kind of i, I know you i know you yeah um, because the counter roof are evil of course but so they encounter maybe one of these assassins who they think yeah. is a counter roof something like that i think that uh, one of the themes that and we're fixing to open this up tlg is in the next six to eight months it's not explored i think a lot in rpgs and skills there's just the Middle Ages were filled with guilds. There was guilds all over the place. Yeah, that's how people, people survived. Yeah, it, it, these these associations. And you had the, the weavers' guilds that would arm themselves and fight in the streets. You know, you had all kinds of just mm -hmm. uh, bloody mayhem. So I think bringing uh, guilds in is just a huge, it reminds huge. Me, huge. Reminds me of uh, that film. What is it? The one, uh, the early American one where they had all those guilds that fought in those five. Gangs of New York. Five square. Gangs yeah, of New York. Kind of, yeah, it's yeah. kind of the same thing. The butcher's guild. Oh, the butcher. Stuff. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah. In the chat, while we're just finishing up here, I'd like anyone that, that's watching right now, what would you like to see uh, in this campaign? And a couple of answers which are not applicable. Dinosaurs, no, sorry. Uh, uh, vampire thrommel, yes. no, no, no. So, but like genuinely, as you as you sort of hear the, the, the stories that I'm trying to tell, at least the structure that I want to put in place, if any of the viewers have some ideas or suggestions, I'd love to hear that. Um, and then, you know, Stephen, you and I have talked about the stories that you want to be told and aired, um, and such a, a fascinating uh, background. What what would be the, and this is, I know you and I have talked about this, for, but for the benefit of this audience, what would be the overarching stories that are happening in sort of aired today? Uh, like the ma major political uh, things that are occurring, which might also impact the free city of Altamira. Uh, perhaps even, as you mentioned, these guilds, are there guilds which are trying to push tendrils into the city? H how do you how do you weave this in besides just popping it on the map? So the, the major thematic things going on, the, the, probably the biggest political movement is the crusade. The empress in New Anoch has called for a crusade. So you have people all over the world going to New Anosia, uh, to carve out their own kingdoms. If you go there and conquer some land, kill everything in it, the Empress is going to give that land to you. So that's one huge thematic thing going on. Another big thing for those people who really get into elves, and this is kind of, it's not emphasized much in the Codex of Eric, but it's there. When Unklar was banished from the plane, he actually left an ailment amongst the elves that when they die, you know, elves are immortal, but when they die, their spirits don't go to the stone fields. They're, they're condemned to the endless pools. 
So this removing that curse that Unclar caused has become this huge thing amongst elves is to oh, somehow cool. combat this curse so that the elves can actually go to, whether it's Shindalay or in the Stonefields or wherever they would go, the mm -hmm. noble dead would go. Because now they're cursed, you know, completely. And the Twilight would be what it is filled with uh, the Twilight elves. Uh, Fontenot was right there, which are filled with these extraordinarily warlike elves. You could bring those thematic elements and the, the bigger picture thematic elements. And then, of course, you've got the Karen Rook and the Pass of Umbra. And the Pass of Umbra are wizards, and they're plotting to bring Umklar back to the plane. To the plane. Uh, and the, the, the philosophy, or what is it, the prophecy there is when Umklar was banished, he was banished when part of his horn was cut off. And that horn, he, he left the plane, but the horn remained. So finding that horn is critical for the evil guys, the evil side of things, to bring Umklar back to the plane. So there's, I mean, you've got several pretty large, and there's a cloak of red, seeking the cloak of red, uh, and then uh, the Gonfod with bringing Orendul back. Uh, there, there's some huge epic things that you can tell. Yeah, and the Gonfod is basically the equivalent of Armageddon, right, in, in this game, in this world. Yes, and, and it kind of depends on how you look at it. So if you're looking at, if you look at it from Orendul's point of view, he will win the Gonfod and save the world from the apocalypse. But if you look at it from Corthang's point of view, who's the lawful good God, he he will allow the world to end as the All Father desired. Uh, so you can take either direction. It's one of, when I designed the I really wanted the DMs to be able to see to be able to do whatever they wanted to do, take this thing and go with it. Uh, so you can, and I don't even define some of the gods really aren't defined as evil or good. They're just gods uh, with their own motivations and their own you know hangups and all of that stuff. What about to, to Phantom's point? And thank you, chat. I mean, there's lots of good uh, stuff here in the chat. I'm uh, looking Chris. over all this. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and Thomas, I agree with that sentiment there. And you can we could have both as well. And I see this campaign as potentially something which threads out um, into many different directions, maybe becomes something more similar to what uh, Jay has done here, where you could have different PCs, um, you know, telling different stories in that same game world. Uh, but uh, one thing that Phantom said, uh, Stephen, what about these militant elves to the south of the city? So, so the elves, are, there's two, two groups, groupings of us, three really. When Unklar uh, is coming to the plane, before he comes to the plains, the elves know this is happening. So they gather in this great concourse and they leave. They, they leave the world of air and abandon everybody. That's why many, many people in air don't like elves. So the Fontenot are this group of elves. The elves all go to Shindelay. The Fontenot are this group of elves who do not want to leave regret leaving and all they want to do is go back to Aerid and fight Unglar and, and help everybody fighting the evil. There's a third group of elves who stay in Aerid and they're scattered all over the place. And they're kind of like wild elves or gray elves, the twilight elves, all of that stuff. However you want to play it over from whatever game system you're playing. But so the Fontenot, they kind of, there's kind of a civil strife in this, the, the realm of Shindelay, which is one of the outer planes. Uh, but the Fontenot, all they do is they sit upon the gate which is right there in the Castle of Spires, which is just north of Altamira, about 20 miles, 30 miles north of Altamira is the Castle of Spires. And when, and this happened in my game that we were running back in the, in the aughts or whenever that was, they went to the Castle of Spires, they slew the evil who was there and opened the gate and the, elven, the elves of Fontenot were, were right there ready to go. They came pouring through and all of their legions immediately began attacking everything. They're very <laughs> disorganized people though. They're, they don't fight. I, I never really cared for, I love the Tolkien movies, that, but I never liked how they did the elves with the uniformity, you know, yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I agree, I and agree. It, it, it just didn't hit me. So the Fontenot's were extraordinarily individualistic, tiny little that. families of two, three, six people, but they're insanely warlike. They will not abide evil under any circumstances. Uh, they love, I won't say love to fight, but they will fight in a nanosecond. So they're, they're very warm. I like that. Yeah. It fits in with Mycelinian elves, which uh, I hate. I hate the late, uh, the Yolan, the isolation of Selene. It drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't fit yeah. my campaign. So these, yeah, that's not, that's an easy. Campaign. No, I love it. And it reminds me of the elves in The Witcher. Uh, you know, yeah. very uh, sort of yeah. you know, tribally, racially motivated in combat. Um all right, so I know John's got to go shortly. Yeah, yeah but, Steve, we got we've got a meeting. Yeah. In like so, comments, Stephen, what's, what's up with the what's up with Hager putting the opossum stuff in the chat? What's that all about? <laughs> Am I missing something? <laughs> so about a year ago, uh, I maybe six months ago, I found a, a baby possum in my yard, and I took it in and 
uh, and kind of patched it back together and then let it okay. go on it. Okay. To do its own thing. It's become a running joke. No, no, you're right. art. <laughs> no, that was the most important question of the day, Jason. So yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to ignore, I didn't know, I didn't know what it was. So, uh, so um, I know uh, everyone's got to break up here. We got yeah. a giveaway going. So, uh, final thoughts from everyone. Uh, Chuck. Uh, go click on that link and back that Indiegogo because we need all the support we can. There you go. Awesome. Please do that. And Chuck, thanks. And for also, it. thank you everybody for just showing up and watching, yeah. and watching us. This is yeah. crazy. I mean, this is good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the power of having a really good community behind mm -hmm. you. That's right. That's you know, right. Without the community, it, without the community, we're just all here talking, talking to each other. So yeah. you know, and, yeah. that, and that's a great thing. Uh, Anna, which we'll see in a couple oh, hours. Yeah. Exactly. See, see you tonight at the Fantasy Mapping Show. So uh, five p.m. Oh. Eastern. So, so yes. uh, yeah. So, so, but thank you so much for 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 inviting me for for a wonderful chat. It was great to yeah. to see you, everyone, and and babble a bit of running games. That's awesome. Matt Ryan of Chaosium Cthulhu. Yep. We're see maps galore with Cthulhu tonight, everyone. Yep. And, and, and Lisa awesome. will be in her prime tonight. It's going to be awesome. Cthulhu, so, yep. Awesome discussion tonight. So, uh, uh, oh, thanks, Drake. Uh, Stephen. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody for coming out. This is really, really cool. And thank you guys for having me on on this impromptu. Yeah. Train. And I want to say, John, thanks for taking up Aired and running these games in it. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be an absolute blast. Love the direction you're taking with it, too. And, thank you. And Jay, thanks for trusting Altamira to troll our games. I'm looking forward to what's coming. Uh, it's Could going to be a good, good year. And I know it's going to be a good year because I can't. I can't do anything with plants. I can't keep any plants alive. <laughs> oh, you do a good job. Of the I liked your gazumba tree, though. Yeah, come I saw that on TikTok. It has a, it has a fruit. <laughs> on. I saw there would be uh, kumquat treants were a request in the new yeah, chat. Yeah. So. <laughs> I may have to do that. I may have to put that in the book, a kumquat treant. That's a genius idea. Oh, my, God. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That would be. Can you use treant in uh, uh, terminology? Or, or do we have to call it something else? Uh, they are called sentients. In, uh, All right. So kumquat. Yeah. I think ants might be one of those protected Wizards of the Coast. I can't. That's not right. That's, not that's right. I think it's called tree ant in the yeah. instead of ant. ant. There's one that's yeah. protected and one that's not, and maybe it's tree ant. I can't. Remember. I actually like sentient though. That's that's sentient, kind of a cool yeah, yeah sentient <laughs> sentient. Uh -huh. yeah. That's it, it's a good it's a good uh, well we'll we'll figure all that. So John, uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> one way or the other. Yeah, well, no, just for me, I want to say thank you to uh, Anna, to Chuck, to Stephen uh, for joining with us on short notice today. And I know Chuck and Stephen have poured a lot of time into uh, my group. I appreciate Stephen being on our Lore Masters Arcanum a week and a half ago. As I said at the top of the stream, my players are very excited, and they don't even know what they're excited about yet, but they'll have reason <laughs> to be excited very soon. Uh, I want to thank you to all of the chatters, everyone that supported us last night and today. Uh, all the comments. I'll go back through the chat log. So if there's anything that I missed that was suggested, um, unless it was suggested by Steve Bloodwild, I will pay attention to it. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, just uh, and then I want to especially thank uh, Jay for opening his home to me uh, last night and today. Have been fantastic. A gracious host. Um, you know, almost as talented as his wife, and it has been great to be here <laughs> in his house. And I'm very much appreciative of it. Uh, we will be. Uh, back with Greyhawk Awakening on Tuesday night, and we have a couple of new folks you'll see on that stream on Tuesday night. I'm looking forward to. Uh, that'll be going every Tuesday, and then uh, LMA will be next Wednesday as well. Then we'll be kicking off our new aired uh, campaign in mid-August. Uh, watch the uh, Discord. Watch the Instagram. Jail, I'm sure, make announcements for us as well as well Absolutely. as our friends at TLG. And just, again, thank you. Uh, so... Um for anyone fan of master question, what does Mrs. Lord Gazamba think of all this? So I've been married 26 years. Doesn't. She is, she is, you know, great, but I've been playing D and D 44 years. So <laughs> let's put that in perspective. There so, might've been more <laughs> elegant ways to say that. Yeah, I was, I'm not sure. That's the... <laughs> My wife is great. I mean, just know that awesome. she put, yeah, Anna's met her in person. She, oh, yeah, uh, she's so, awesome. We got a hype train to close. Thank yeah. you. She she yep. puts up with a lot of my BS. So let's just put it that way. All right, let's do yep. If you have both of these and you win, get with me and I'll figure something out. You get your choice of either The Treasures of Greyhawk, which is a great series of adventures, or The Book of Taverns from uh, from uh, Necro uh, the old Necromancer games, which is great for setting up tavern settings in your in your campaign. All right, so that's what we're doing, an impromptu giveaway here. We also have two 
Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry there, Steven. Two Frog God game, $25 gift certificate giveaways tonight. And we love Frog God. Yeah, we love Frog God <laughs> for the Fantasy we Mapping love. Show tonight. Um, and then tomorrow, <laughs> Sunday Sunday night is big. The, the Creative Jam, which I, I, I love doing these. We do these not enough. Um, Christine Van Patten, Mike Disney, uh, Jeremy from Games Dave, one of our sponsors, Darling and Bill, the Master Craft, are all together. They're all going to be crafting, and I'm just going to be hosting it. We're all going to have talk topics of what comes up with crafting and gaming. And that'll be a really cool session. That's Sunday. And then the bi a big granddaddy coming up a week from Saturday. Anna's playing with Ed Greenwood again and two drink minimum. All right. Special guest, voice actor, Mark Muir. Mark Muir DMs on the D&D wow. &D channel. He plays in Dave Walter's game. Uh, and he uh, he does all the Mass Effect, a lot of the Mass Effect voices. He's great. He joins the cast uh, for, of Two Drink Minimum for this one, Depths of Terror, the name of nice. the adventure, a week from Saturday. So uh, please note that that'll be a fun one. And that's all I need to I need to push. So here we hey, go. Can I, can Thank I you, Jeremy. Frog God? Yeah, go ahead. Can I plug Frog God real quick? Please. Yeah, so Frog God is actually doing a series of modules uh, using the Castles and Crusades rule set. So look for that very soon. Oh, very cool. That is awesome. And Frog God, like I said, there you go. There's a shout out. They sponsor the Fantasy Mapping Show. So we got two twenty-five gift certificate gift certificates. Only seven hours from now, eight o'clock tonight. That'll be on. All right, last call! Exclamation point drawing! If you want to get on this, all right. I'm going to close it out. We'll do that, and we're going to raid into another sponsor because Reaper's on. So we'll raid into Reaper. I rarely ever get to raid into Reaper because of the time differences. So we'll do that. While you're That's doing that raid, yeah, I got to point out another funny uh, comment in chat. So when you were explaining, uh, you know, the difference in the number of years you've played. Uh, D and D versus how long you've been married. Uh, Phantom uh, pointed out that I may need to host you at my home very soon. Uh, so. <laughs> the great thing is, I know my wife. I know my wife's never going to watch this, so I, I know that's not going to happen. She, she won't even come on camera, you know. No, my son will, but you know, someplace. Here we go, winner, winner, winner. Scott, Obsidian Risk. Nice. Go. Let's go, Scott. All right, Scott. You let me know which one you want. And if you have both of them, well, I'll get you something. I'll send it out. I'll get it out today. By the way, thank you for the all the Virtual Grout Con shirts, orders from last night's game. These are available for the con. Steven and Chuck are DMing for Virtual Grout Con. And John. And maybe even Anna DMing. There you go. This is an ode to, uh, an ode to Bone Hill, one of your favorites of all time there, Steven. Uh, done by Dan Smith. Yep. Color by Anna. Virtual Grout Con 3 t-shirt. They are on the site and available if you want to order them. All righty. So uh, here we go. Um, we're we're going to raid into uh, Reaper. See you in about seven hours, everyone. Thank you for the unbelievable support. John, thanks for uh, Thank coming you, here. Oh, man. And, My uh, pleasure. He drove from Pittsburgh, and what a nightmare getting through Philly Ooh, yesterday. Wee. That was a nightmare and a half. So we'll, we'll see you all in a couple uh, couple hours. Everyone have a good one. I'm hey, gonna hit, you know I'm going to hit the wrong button you. now. I'm going to hit a freaking wrong button. I am. Oh, you yeah, you've been on a roll lately. You got I know. Start. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I have been, so. Awesome. All right, let me set the raid up, Raiding the Reaper. I can't remember that time I Raiding the Reaper. Raid, 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 Reaper. How come I'm not showing up? There we go. Five, four, three, two, one. See you in seven hours. All right, everybody. That was awesome. That was great. I can't. That was so fantastic. <laughs>